The Jack Benny Program, presented by Lucky Strike. L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Just listen to the words of tobacco warehouseman George Webster. And mark it after mark it. I've seen the makers of Lucky Strike buy fine tobacco that makes one grand smoke. William Curran, tobacco auctioneer, said... For years and years, I've seen the makers of Lucky Strike buy tobacco that's just chock full of smoke and enjoyment. Smoked Luckies myself for 23 years. Friends, independent tobacco experts can see the makers of Lucky Strike consistently select and buy that fine, that light, that naturally mild tobacco. Yes, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco, and fine tobacco means real deep-down smoking enjoyment for you. Remember, L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. So round, so firm, so fully packed. So free and easy on the draw. The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, the Sportsman's Quartet, and yours truly, Rochester Van Jones. Gentlemen, it isn't usually my place to introduce the star of our show, but today it's worth five dollars to me, so here he is, Jack Benny. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking, and folks, Rochester, you can go now. But boss, don't you want me to stay here and do some jokes like Don Wilson? <laughs> no, no, Rochester. See, you're not fat enough. Well, five dollars in introduction ain't gonna make me no Sydney Green Street. <laughs> Right, are you dissatisfied with our financial agreement? Well... Look, if you're unhappy, you know my policy. Anybody that works for me can talk to me about anything at any time. I know, but as soon as anybody mentions money, you turn down the volume on your hearing aid. <laughs> what? The last time I asked for a raise, you faded me for 25 seconds. <laughs> I didn't fade you. It was done by my vice president in charge of finances. And anyway, this is the last time This program is starting out like Fred Allen's And anyway, this is the last time I'm going to use you as an announcer Your voice is too hoarse and rough Oh, it ain't my fault, boss My voice, my voice was nice and smooth what? Until my voice Oh, I just said my voice I didn't know what it was You know, my voice was nice and smooth Till I had my appendix taken out Appendix? What's your appendix got to do with your voice? Long vocal cords <laughs> Well, I guess I've gotten as much out of that $5 as I can. Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. Well, Jack, here it is, the last program of the season. That's right, Mary, and boy, am I glad, too. I need a vacation. Oh, Jack, you haven't been working so hard. You don't need a vacation. I do, too. But anyway, Mary, since this is the last show, how about giving me a big kiss? Okay. Go on. How was that? You're right, Jack. You need a vacation. <laughs> Wait a minute, sister. You may not think I'm good, but in my act at the Roxy, I do a kissing scene with Marjorie Reynolds, and she loves it. Especially when I put my arms around her. Yes, I know. Marjorie told me about that, and she wants me to ask you something. What? <laughs> well, Marjorie wants to know if you... <laughs> what, Mary? Well, Marjorie wants to know if... <laughs> Marjorie wants to know why. Well, she wants to know if you used to wrestle with alligators for a living. <laughs> oh, stop. Anyway, Mary, I'll miss you this summer. But I'll be looking forward to next fall when we'll all be together again. Oh, do you want me back on your program next season, Jack? I certainly do. Well, then I'd like to talk to you about an increase in salary. Go right ahead. Okay. <laughs> One, two, three, four. Testing. One, two, three, now four. Now cut that out. <laughs> you know, sometimes you carry a thing too far. Hiya, Jackson. Hello, Livy. I'm looking at the world through rose-colored eyes. <laughs> Hello, Bill. Bill, what are you so happy about? Well, gee whiz, Jackson. Why shouldn't I be happy? Last Sunday, I made radio history. I was on three shows. Three shows? Yeah, sure. I was on your show. I was on my own show. And I was on Fred Allen's show. The only one who missed me was Edgar Bergen. Bergen doesn't need you. He's got Mortimer Snurd. <laughs> and compared to you, Mortimer Snurd is a doctor of philosophy. Well, I'm glad you told me, Jackson. If I ever catch philosophy, I'll give him a buzz. Yes, do that, do that. But, Phil, doing three shows 
shows a day must be an awful strain. And after all, what's more important, money or your health? Money or your health? Well, um... Hey, what do you think, Jackson? She's asking you. <laughs> and anyway, Phil, why do you have to go around trying to make more money? Because you don't pay us enough. What? Sure, that's why Dennis Day had to get another show. That's why I had to get another show. And that's why Don Wilson has got four shows. What about Mary? She's only got one show. Yeah, and look how thin she is. <laughs> look, don't blame me for a tight girdle, will you? Now, wait a minute, Jack. What I wear has nothing to do oh, with... Oh, hello, Miss Livingston. Oh, hello, Dennis. Gee, it's good to see you all again. How are you feeling, Mr. Benny? Well, I... How are you doing at the Roxy Theater? Oh, business is... Did you have a nice trip from Chicago? <laughs> it was pretty good. Did you good. really break the box office record there? Well, I... Gee, it's our last show, and he won't even talk to me. <laughs> Dennis, I will talk to you if you'll only give me a chance. Now, what have you been doing since you've been in New York? How are you, Miss Livingston? Dennis, I asked you something. <laughs> I mean, what have you been doing in New York? Oh, I went to see some shows and visited relatives. Oh, what shows did you see? I couldn't get in. Well, how were your relatives? I don't know. They were at the shows. <laughs> what are you talking about? Say, Dennis, I didn't know you had relatives in New York. I don't. They live in Newark, New Jersey. So last night I rented a car and drove under the Hudson River and it was awfully damp. Gee, did I get wet. Wet? Why, was there a leak in the tunnel? Oh, tunnel! <laughs> that, uh, come on, Dennis, let's have your song. Okay. To kiss you The way I kiss you in my dream I can't make up my mind To leave my fears behind Try to carry off my scheme I spend an hour each day Rehearsing what to say But practice doesn't pay it seems I can't get up the nerve to kiss you the way I kiss you in my dream. I spend an hour each day rehearsing what to say, but practice doesn't pay it seems. I can't get up the nerve to kiss Get up the nerve to kiss you, sung by Dennis Day. Very good, Dennis. Thanks. Oh, say, Mr. Benny, I meant to ask you, how's Mr. Allen? Who? Fred Allen. Well, kid, it was nice seeing you again. <laughs> no, no, Phil. In fact, I'm glad he brought it up. But Dennis, I'm happy to tell you that Fred Allen has the same old program, the same old jokes, the same Oh, old... wait a minute, Jack. That's not fair. I've heard all of Fred's programs. They've been very funny. Mary, I wouldn't mind if his jokes just laid there. But they crawl out of the radio and stain your rugs. <laughs> Some program. That just shows what you know, Jackson. I think the funniest thing in radio is Alan's Alley. Oh, you do, eh? Yeah, I think so, too. Oh, you do, eh? I think Mr. Benny is much funnier than Mr. Allen. I think so, too. <laughs> you huh? do, eh? Yes, I do. And what's so great about Alan's Alley? Anybody with half an ounce of talent can do that. Oh, yeah? I'd like to see you do it. Well, I'll just show you, sister. Phil, get your band ready while I put this clothespin on my nose so I'll sound like Fred Allen. Now, I'll go down to the alley, and you kids will play the parts of the people that live there. Okay, Phil, music. <laughs> and so, Kenny Del Mar, I won't say it's been raining here in New York, but last night... Oh, Mr. Allen! Mr. Allen! Well, well, if it isn't Cleveland. <laughs> He wears. 
Cleveland, Kenny and I were just discussing the rains we've been having here in New York. Well, Mama says that all the rain here in New York was caused by Al Jolson. Al Jolson? <laughs> He was singing April Showers and had two claws left over. Oh. And Mama also said... I don't know. You write this stuff on Thursday, it's raining, then on Sunday, the sun shines, and you're dead. Now, what else is new with your mother, Cleveland? Well, Mama says that from now on, she's going to stop wearing slacks. Stop wearing slacks? Why? A policeman gave her a ticket for pulling a trailer without a license. Oh, 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 oh. Well, so much for your mother and her homegrown bus. We've got to get down to Benny's Boulevard. What is, your, what is your question for tonight? Our question is, is Fred Allen or Jack Benny the better comedian? Shall we leave? As one of my eyes said to the other, let's pack our bags and go. <laughs> Nice to be back in Allen's Alley, Cleveland. And I see Senator Harris is home. There's a 10-gallon hat and a 5-gallon jug on the porch. Let's knock on the bunghole and see what he's got to say. Somebody, I say somebody knock. Yes. Harris I... is the name. Senator Harris, that is. I'm from the West. From the West, When eh? I'm east of the Mississippi River, I'm in enemy territory. Look, Senator. I hate the East. My favorite actress is Mae West. Look, No I... man living can make me see East Wind. All I never right. go out of the house on Easter Sunday. Senator. When I bake bread, I won't use yeast. That's yeast. I thought that'd get a rise out of you. Now, look, Senator, if, if you... Hey, just... son, what you got on your mind? Just a free country. Well, I'm trying. Never try. saw anyone like you, son. Your mouth's wide open, but your tongue's just laying there. <laughs> You're tired, eh? Well, Senator, the question tonight is, who is the better comedian, Fred Allen or Jack Benny? I brought, I say I brought it up in the Senate. Now watch this one, son, it's tricky. <laughs> I brought it up in the Senate and it made Senator Tidings glad. Ha, 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 glad tidings. That's a pun, son. I heard it. That's an anecdote, you nanny goat. Now, wait a minute. Just tell me which comedian you like better, Allen or Benny. Where's Allen from? Boston. How about Benny? He's from Waukegan. Waukegan's west of Boston, ain't it? Yeah. Benny's the one. So long, son. So long. So long. So long. So long, that is. Where's that sound of that Always late. Late. Well, I suppose the senator has gone back to his newspaper. Spends all night reading Westbrook Pegler. I wonder if Titus Day is at his home. Always so moody. Howdy, bub. <laughs> well, well, Mr. Day, I see you're at home. Yep, day in and day out, days in. <laughs> yeah, but you're saying your eyes look all red. Been crying, Bob, reading a sad book. What's the title of it? Forever Amber. <laughs> but Titus, Forever Amber isn't a sad book. Tis when you're my age, Bob. <laughs> oh, I see. Well, I have a very important question to ask you tonight. Uh, who do you think is the better comedian? Fred Allen or Jack Benny? Well, I never hear them myself. When they come on, I put my radio out in the hen house. In the hen house? Why? Steps up production. Every time Allen and Benny lay an egg, my hens try to match it. <laughs> and that really increases your egg production? Yep, and did up to last Sunday. What happened last Sunday? All my hens killed themselves straining. Well, so long, Bob. <laughs> trouble just like city folk. Let's try this next house. How do you do this? Well, Mr. Nussbaum. You were expecting maybe my road wire? Oh, no. Well, Mr. Nussbaum, do you listen to the radio? <laughs> well, Mr. Nussbaum, I'm trying to find out who do you think is the better comedian, Fred Allen or Jack Benny? In my house, that is making arguments. My wife, Pansy, is liking Fred Allen. And you? I am liking Duffy's tempo. <laughs> I see. When Duffy is broadcasting, Pansy is leaving the room. Uh-huh. When Fred Allen is broadcasting, I am leaving the room. What happens when Jack Benny is broadcasting? The radio is leaving the room. <laughs> Thank you. Well, let's... 
courtesy of Dennis Cassidy is at home. <laughs> oh, how do you do? <laughs> well, well, Dennis Cassidy, how do you feel today? Oh, terrible, terrible, terrible. The other day I went out to Brooklyn and sat myself down in Ebbets Field and started cheering for the Giants. Cheering for the Giants in Brooklyn? What happened? <laughs> I'm not long for this world. Well, Mr. Cassidy, I just dropped in to ask you a question. Who do you think is the better comedian, Fred Allen or Jack Benny? Well, no, I wouldn't be known. The only program I listen to is A Day in the Life of an Irish Lad on Wednesday night. You mean you like Dennis Day? As my next-door neighbor would say, hoo-hoo-hoo! I know. <laughs> But my question is, who's the better comedian, Fred Allen or Jack Benny? Without a moment's hesitation, I picked Jack Benny because, to me, he's the greatest comedian in the whole world. Well, and why did you pick Jack Benny? Because this is our last program of the season. I want to be back next year. What? <laughs> you might be, me, your coat never got right. I wish that kid wouldn't be so clever on a night. My sponsor is with me. Well, well, look, we want... Here's a new house built at the end of the alley. I wonder who lives there. I beg your pardon, sir. Well, that's quite all right, old man. Go around to the back and I'll give you something to eat. <laughs> My friend. Fred, it certainly is a surprise finding you here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Jack, you can, you can cut out the imitation. Stop holding your nose. I'm here now. I know. That's why I'm holding it. <laughs> I got the first one in anyway. <laughs> you know, you look better with the clothespin on. <laughs> why, you, why, you ghoul, if you were 30 years younger, I'd punch you right in the eye. What? You'd hit a kid of seven? <laughs> Now, listen, Benny. When you were seven, Sarah Bernhardt broke the attendance record at the Roxy. <laughs> and she didn't have Rochester with her either. Now, tell me, what are you doing down here in Allen's Alley? Well, if you want to know, I'm conducting a poll. What are you doing here? Jack, if I told you why I'm here, the real, honest-to-goodness truth, cross my heart and hope to look like Jessel, the real truth, <laughs> you, wouldn't, you wouldn't believe it. Yes, I would. Why did you come? To louse up your program. <laughs> Brad, don't be greedy. You're lousing up your own program. Isn't that enough? Now, wait a minute, Jack. Let's not argue. After all, this is your last program of the season. You're going off the air. Yeah, I guess you're right. I go off the air every year at this time. My sponsor thinks I should have a vacation. Well, confidentially, Jack, that isn't the real reason. Your sponsor knows that your material won't keep in the summer. <laughs> Even what? printing the scripts on dry ice won't do it. <laughs> <laughs> you and oysters get a little gamey with the hot weather. <laughs> well, I remember a broadcast you did that was so bad it corroded the 6th Avenue L. Not only that... Now, wait but... a minute, wait a minute, Benny. I have a surprise for you. I have some friend of yours, friends of yours visiting Can't me... Can't even read. I mean... <laughs> well, you are, you're so cheap, I didn't think you hired more than one person at a time. No. I didn't... <laughs> Floral in the script here. <laughs> I have some friends of yours visiting me here in the alley. Some friends of mine? Yes. Hey, fellas, come out here. Boys, what are you doing here? Hmm. Well, I'm glad you're here because I'm conducting a poll to find out who's the better comedian, Fred Allen or Jack Benny. Yes, so speak up, boys. Who gets your vote? The man that we vote for is F.B. Boone. He sells cigarettes morning, night, and noon. About him we are wild. He is fine and he's light and he's naturally mild. The man that he works with is Speedy Riggs. From golden tobacco he makes many swigs while they're planting. They'll be chanting. You can hear them from Mobile to Scranton. So yes, yes, indeed, our vote goes to Speedy and Boone. Hey, that's very good. It certainly is, isn't it? Oh, well, Wait a minute, Oh, well, 
that's what we want. Boys, boys, please. Boys, wait a minute. Wait a minute, boys. Boys, wait a minute, boys. Wait a minute, boys. Wait a minute, boys. Wait a minute. Come on, Cleveland. We've been here in Allen's Alley long enough. Let's get out of here. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, since this is our last program of the season, I'd like to present a young comedian who's going to take my place this summer. I first met this young man two and a half years ago in the South Pacific. He was in uniform, entertaining his fellow G.I.s, and I thought he was great. The next time I saw him was after the war. We had lunch together, and I knew he had a sense of humor because when I paid the check, he laughed as I put my hand into his pocket. <laughs> and here he is, Jack Parr. Thank you very much, Jack. You're welcome. And Jack, I want you to know that after we had lunch that day, I realized that you had a certain talent that wasn't to be ignored. So I went to my sponsor and asked him to give you the summer job. Well, Jack, I felt the same way about you. You did? Yes, I... I, too, noticed that you had a certain talent, so I went to my tailor and had him sew up my pockets, you see. <laughs> well, that's quick thinking, Jack. But look, this isn't television. If we keep calling each other Jack, people will get confused. So I'll call you, Jack, and you can call me. I can tell him what to call you. <laughs> I'd give a million dollars if we weren't on the air, right? Brad. <laughs> Don't listen to him, Jack. Just call me, Mr. Benny. All right, Mr. Benny. Uh, isn't that Fred Allen? Yes. I listen to his program every Sunday. Well, don't apologize. That happens to a lot of people. <laughs> they listen to me and forget to turn the radio off after I'm through, is he? Well, how can they? They're asleep. <laughs> They are not. Now, there is a clever ad lib for you. <laughs> they, they are not. That shows what happens when you catch Mr. Benny with his writers down. <laughs> Mr. Allen, did you say writers? Uh, certainly. You mean that when Mr. Benny's on the radio, he doesn't just make that stuff up? Make that stuff up? Jack, listen, son. Last year, for two weeks, Benny slept in the lobby of the Sherry Netherlands Hotel. He couldn't ad-lib, I'd like a room, please. What are you talking about? I ad-libbed that once, and it cost me $12 a day. So go be clever. Now, look, Par, do you have any plans about what you're going to do starting next week when you take over my show? Well, I don't know too much, Jack, but I... Just made sure that I have a very funny script and I'm going to get a lot of laughs. Laughs? Uh, what kind of laughs? Big laughs. Big laughs? Fred. Yeah? <laughs> Come here a minute. Yeah, you mean that there was... Uh, well, I, I think you're right, Jack. Look, uh, look, kid. Have you ever tried any dramatic stuff? <laughs> Dramatic, gee, I, I don't know. I haven't even thought about doing anything serious. Uh -huh. What I had in mind was to come out with a fast opening and say, how do you do, ladies and gentlemen? This is Jack Parr. Uh -huh. A funny thing happened to me on the way to the studio today. I crossed the street against the light and stepped right in front of a taxi cab. Oh, wait, weren't you afraid the cab would hit you? Of course not. Everybody knows a cab is yellow. <laughs> oh, Parr, you may not have a meter on you. Oh, Par, you may not have a meter on you, but you're sure ticking tonight. No, no, Par, no. Those are the kind of jokes Phil Harris uses. See, that won't... You see, that won't get you anywhere. Now, how come I got him two shows? Because... <laughs> he doesn't want to be thin like Mary. You see? Now, it's no use, Fred. Instead of fooling around here, let's really try and help Jack Parr get started on his new career. Well, I guess you're right, Jack. And I don't mind helping a new comedian. After all, I can't live forever. What about me? You already have. Fred, if you're going to give the kid advice, give it to him, will you please? Uh, very well. Now, first of all, Jack, radio is a very good Call business... Call him son. They're getting his son. I get it. The uh, uh, radio is a very uh, good business if you... I'm start starting to sound like Rochester here. <laughs> radio is a very good business, uh, son, and you're getting into it at the right time. Because nowadays, if you make good in radio, you go to television. 
If you're slipping, you go to the Roxy. <laughs> yes, for two weeks. And, kid, the next bit of advice I want to give you is the most important of all. Now, one of the worst things that can happen to a radio comedian is to have his program faded off the air. <laughs> Mr. Allen, you were, you were cut off the air a few weeks ago, weren't you? Me cut off the air? Yes, for 25 seconds. Oh, no, no, no. People misunderstood. You see, I've been in radio for 15 years. And to show its appreciation, NBC, that big-hearted organization, <laughs> gave me those 25 seconds as a vacation. <laughs> with, uh, with pay, of course. I had a wonderful time. I hiked to the water cooler, built a campfire in a Dixie cup, Roasted an old script and popped all the corn. Gad, what a tan I had when I got back. <laughs> that isn't what Mr. Benny told me. Well, what did Mr. Benny tell you? Well, he said the NBC has a man sitting at master controls, and yes. his job is to see that the right person comes on at the right time. And when you got a laugh, the control man was so startled, he thought he had the wrong program and pulled the switch. <laughs> That's exactly what happened. Well, I've uh, got to run along now, fellas. Thanks very much for your advice, and I'll try my best to forget it. Yes, yes, do that. <laughs> and before you leave, Jack Parr, I want to wish you a lot of luck on your summer show, and I hope that you'll be a great success. Thank you very much. And, Jack, if at any time you feel that you need some more help and you can't get me at home, you see, you can buy an album of my records, which are now on sale at your local music store. You see? You'll, uh, you'll also find them in the bagel slot at the Automat. <laughs> Yes. Uh, so long, Jack. So long. Say, Fred. Yeah? Fred, uh, I yeah. think this kid, Jack Parr, is going to be all right. But, gee, I... Jack, I wonder Jack, if... Jack, stop worrying. How can he hurt us on the radio? What do you mean? Well, what has he got to make jokes about? He's young, has plenty of his own hair... Doesn't wear bifocals. That's right. Gee, and he hasn't got wrinkles in his face no. or bags under his eyes. <laughs> he doesn't talk through his nose. Or play the violin. Yeah. <laughs> we haven't got a thing to worry no. about. Come on, Fred. I'll take you over to the water cooler and buy you a drink. Thanks. Huh? to say this, uh, ladies and gentlemen, but Jack will be back in just a minute. In the meantime, here is Basil Rysdale. As you listen to this historic chant of the tobacco auctioneer, remember, LSMFT. American. Lucky strike means fine tobacco. And fine tobacco is what counts in a cigarette. Fifty million pounds of tobacco bought and sold. That's the 21-year record of Harry R. King, independent tobacco buyer of Durham, North Carolina. He said, At auction after auction, I've seen the makers of Lucky Strike buy real fine tobacco. Tobacco that smokes up smooth and mild. For a real smoke, I pick Lucky's. Smoked them for 18 years. Independent tobacco experts like Mr. King can see the makers of Lucky Strike consistently select and buy that fine, that light, that naturally mild tobacco. Fine, light, naturally mild tobacco. Real Lucky Strike tobacco. L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Yes. L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. And fine tobacco means real deep down smoking enjoyment for you. So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank Fred Allen for lousing up my show, and I'll try my best to do the same thing for him next week. This is our last broadcast of the season. We'll be back again in the fall. Of course, we're still at the Roxy Theater. Thanks for listening to us all season, and I know you'll enjoy Jack Parr very much during the summer. Thanks again, and good night. This is NBC, the National Broadcast.